Hey, hey, hey. It's a beautiful Friday here in the Bahamas. The weather is nice outside. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. Um, been outside this morning for a quick stroll. I actually did some recording this morning, so it's already been a fabulous and a wonderful day. But I wanted to come and have a conversation with you today for just a short time to basically remind you that you were born to do something special and that it takes a decision, just one decision, to start doing that exact thing. I wanna challenge you this morning to, to do just that. It's time to decide. Will you stay stuck or will you take action? Now, when I was a little girl, actually I was eight years old and I vividly remember this. I used to go outside of my grandmother's house. So we lived um, in a, a three bedroom house at the time and the kitchen had a back door with three steps because the foundation was built up so high. It had like three big, large steps to get down to the ground. And as I opened the back door, I would sit on that top step and as I sat on the step, I would glaze, just, just glance up uh, at the stars. And I was so fascinated by the stars. Now, this was back at a time when there were actually lots of stars in the sky. Today, you don't see as many stars. But back then, because this was like about 20 years ago, the sky was just lit with these tiny glistening lights just flashing in the sky. And uh, as I watched the stars, um, I would often see stars things move and when I say things, I clean, I labeled everything that moved a shooting star. It could have been a satellite orbiting the earth. It could have been a airplane f flying by or it could have actually been a star. But anything that moved in that sky that was glittered with the twinkling lights, I made a wish on that thing. I wished that who I was when I became an adult, battery's dying, who I was when I became an adult would be someone that would make a difference in the world, that I would show up as the person that God had created me to be because as a little girl, I knew that I wanted to be a teacher. I knew that I wanted to help other people learn. But back then, I thought it was more of a traditional type of teacher. And so I would go outside and I would sit on that step and I would just wish on stars night after night after night. And then I turned 13. And with turning 13, started so many other challenges in my life because it was at 13 that my great-grandmother died. And my great-grandmother took care of me. Mother was this massive woman. She was tall. She was a massive woman and she would embrace me and I would feel her warmth and I would feel so safe in mother's embrace. Mother was the woman who would make me cream tea. Yes, back then, I didn't like food, but your girl could put it down today. But back then, I didn't really like food. And so no matter what was cooked in the household for that day, if I didn't want to eat that thing, my great grandmother would make me cream tea and she would get the bread and break it up in the tea. And I would use my spoon to scoop that nice moist bread out and that would be my dinner. Mother walked me to school. She was at the gate to walk home with me after school. And so when mother died, so many things were taken away from me with her death. Um, and that was just the start of the decline of so many other aspects of my life. Um, it was during the my, my teen years that I experienced betrayal from um, someone that was supposed to nurture me. It was during those years that I experienced situations that um, that really caused me to question who men were because there were people inside uh, our circle who were supposed to nurture and protect me. But as a 13 year old, they saw a breast and a shape and, and they were inappropriate in their remarks. And some even attempted to take away my innocence, but I was saved from that. But the experience and the trauma of dealing with that so early in life had me scarred. 
And so from 13 through my teen years, um, straight through uh, getting married and having my kids and being on jobs that were so unsatisfying, my life just wasn't the life that I knew that I was created to live. Um, I knew that day that I stood in my bathroom and I, and I said to myself, this, this isn't the life that you imagined. I knew within my heart that I had made some poor decisions. Because when I was younger, I had a vision of who I wanted to be. I had a vision of the life that I would live. I had, I had seen the seed that was placed inside of me that was supposed to be nurtured and groomed. Uh, and it wasn't, it was neglected. And, and with the neglect and my poor decisions, um, I'd lost my dreams. As a matter of fact, I didn't even remember my dreams when I was 23, 24, 25 dreams. I didn't even remember that I had dreams because I was so busy just trying to stay alive. I was so busy just trying to keep my head above the fray. I was so focused on not living in overwhelm. I was so focused on not slipping in too deep of a depression. My life was this rat race and this hamster wheel of unhappiness and this just could not be what life was all about. I had lost my dreams and I was in this life that was not representative of what I knew that I was capable of or of what I wanted. And when I came out or emerged from the situation of making that courageous decision that I wanted to rebuild my life, I, I wanted to give my children a better future, I wanted to live a better future. Once I had made that decision, not knowing how I would do it, I became absolute in my desire to be all that I knew that I was created to be. Life sometimes forces us or pushes our hands um, and places us in a corner and backs us in that corner. And when we come out, we come out fighting, but we don't come out with a clear mind because all we come out doing is trying to survive. I've been there. And I know exactly how it feels to grow up in a family that's large, where you could easily disappear. You're provided for. Um, all of your basic necessities are met, but you feel neglected, you feel unseen and isolated. I know exactly what it feels like to want to be loved so bad, to want somebody to see me for more than just a pretty face. I know what it feels like to want to feel inside of me that somebody else loved me that they cherished me, that they wanted to be affectionate with me, but they wanted to be real with me, that they didn't just want to have sex with me. I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like to be in relationships where, with, and friendships where I give and I give and I give, just hoping to get a little of what I give back. I know what it feels like to prove to other people that I am worthy, that I am deserving, to spend so much energy, just, just so much energy in getting people to see that I am valuable and that they should choose me. I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like to be an overwhelmed single mom, doing her best to feed, educate, nurture, and care for two children who made mistakes, but made mistakes with good intentions and good intentions really don't count. I know what it feels like for your children to hold resentment towards you because you did the absolute best that you could do, but it wasn't the best that they required. I know what it feels like to take my paycheck and pay all of my bills and have $50 left over to carry me to the next pay period. But I also know what it feels like to know inside of you that that is not the life that you want for you or for your children. 
I know what it feels like to know that there's a gift inside of you. There's a dream inside of you. There's a life that you want to live, but you don't know how to do it. You don't know how to get out of the rat race. I know what it feels like, but I also know what it feels like to harness your power, to reach out and grab your power and reclaim your power. I know what it feels like to stand in society and live my dreams, regardless of who says what, whether society approves, family approves, or anybody else approves. I know the satisfaction of knowing that I approve of who I am and what I am doing. I know the satisfaction it feels like to know that, that I am doing everything that God has called me to do. When I go to bed at night, I can go to bed satisfied that I am living the purpose that has been placed inside of me. And I know exactly what it feels like. I know it, what it feels like to use the broken experiences of my life, the experiences that should have shackled me, the experiences that should have killed me, the experiences that should have kept me down. I know what it feels like to be victorious in sharing those experiences and allowing other people to see that the past doesn't have to be the future and that we have the power inside of us to break the shackles, to unleash ourselves, to recreate ourselves, and to live the life that we envision for ourselves. You were born to do something special and you can't get rid of it, it's nagging you. It reminds you on a periodic basis that it's there. It keeps telling you that, hey, I'm here, do something with me. And it's tired of you covering it up with excuses about why you won't go after your dreams. It's tired of you saying that it's not possible. It's tired of you worrying about what other people would think. It's tired of you ignoring it. And it is now time for you to take a stand for yourself and to proclaim that the life that you want for yourself is indeed possible and that you will do every single thing thing in your power to make that dream a reality. I want to give you three quick steps to living a more purposeful life. The first step I want to share with you today is that in order to change the trajectory of your life, in order for you to live a more purposeful life, you have to take ownership of your life. You have to take ownership of every decision that you've made for every decision that you didn't make and lived by default, you have to accept responsibility for those things. You have been an active participant in your life, whether by choice or whether by giving tacit approval to the things that showed up in your life. And the only way that you can start to live a more purposeful life is when you take ownership of the responsibility of your life to go from being a victim to moving into victim victor, victory. You can move from victim to victor by understanding that your decisions influence the trajectory of your life. The decisions that you make are either taking you toward your purpose, your destiny, your ultimate goal, or they're taking you away from it. They're keeping you back. They're weighing you down. But you have to take ownership of the things that you allow to happen in your life. To change the way that your life is, you have to make a decision to own your future. The second thing I want to share with you today is that you have to create the roadmap. I and mean, when you set out on a destination, when you're in a foreign land and you turn your GPS on, it says from where you are to where you're going. And that, that GPS can only take you along that path once it has a starting point and an ending point. You will go nowhere with just the start. In order to get to your destination, there has to be an end point, a final destination. And so you have to create the roadmap to where you want to be. And that's how life becomes purposeful. 
Life becomes purposeful when we create the journey. Many of us go down the beaten path, and that's fine. Many of us are called, though, to create our own paths, and that requires us to really create the roadmap for where we want to be. Who are you? 10 years from now, what do you want to be doing? 20 years from now, how do you want life to be? We have the power to create that. And so in order to live a more purposeful life, you have to set the destination and not live by default. The third thing I wanna encourage you to do is to take action. You see, taking responsibility and creating the roadmap is fine, but getting to that final destination won't happen without action. Action is the prerequisite for success. Now, because we take action doesn't necessarily mean success will happen one day, three weeks, or even a year out. So if your desire for success is a microwave approach, I want to let you know today that you're setting yourself up for disappointment. The road and the journey to success is a continuous one. We will journey, we will celebrate, we will journey, we will fall down, we will journey, we will get back up with the lesson and make the journey more meaningful and more impactful. We all fall down. And in the fall, we learn valuable lessons. As we take action, we're gonna learn some best practices. We're gonna learn some things that we really shouldn't do. And then we're gonna learn some things that we need to tweak, but we must take action. Without action, a plan is just a plan is just a plan. Now I want to share with you that the power of making a decision is the power to change your life. Take responsibility, create the roadmap and take action. These are not just uh, suggestions that are being thrown up. These are some of the principles that I've actually used to help over 2,400 women change their life. Women who have opened businesses, expanded their businesses, women who have uh, become uh, engaged in relationships that are healthy, who've been able to establish their own personal boundaries, women, so, women who've been able to create their, their, the vision for their lives, women who've been able to overcome trauma, women who've been able to overcome limitations, women who have now been able to gain clarity and see the future so that they can create the life that they want to live and that they are currently living today. So it's just not a bunch of crap that, that the, these suggestions are just not, not a bunch of crap that's been thrown at you. These are actually time proven methods, some of them. Some of the time proven methods of really how to live a more purposeful life. Yes, a part of what I do is inspire women. A part of my platform is to use my life stories to help women see the possibilities that exist and to help them realize that the past does not dictate how glorious your future could be because we all have skeletons. Every single person on this earth has a skeleton in their closet. Some of their skeletons are open in the public and some of them aren't. So don't allow the judgment of other people to cause you to act or not to act. Stay focused on being the very best that you can be because Regardless of what has happened in your past, your future is still bright. And it doesn't matter who has told you that you are in, aren't enough. It doesn't matter who's told you that you're not deserving, that you're not worthy, that your dreams are not possible. It doesn't matter. What matters is what you believe. I believe that my transformation was possible. I believe that my future was possible. I believe that the life that I wanted to live, the man that I wanted to marry, the home that I wanted to have, the career that I wanted to have, I believed that those things were possible and I went after them wholeheartedly. But inspiration will only carry you so far. There comes a time when you have to decide to stop just being inspired and to now take the motivation that the inspiration has given you and to take action on your life. So I wanna offer you my personal invitation 
to jump into my free workshop this coming Monday, February 8th. Come and let's talk about six ways for you to take ownership of your life. This is an unconventional uh, workshop where we're going to really look at those limiting beliefs and give, and you're going to walk away with six ways to overcome those beliefs and to create a foundation that you can begin to work on and to work with to build your best future. Your best future is not just cliche. It's not just a cliche statement. Living your best life has become a social media uh, phenomenon. It's, it's just become one of those buzzwords. It's just become one of those things now that when people say it, um, yeah, 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 that's how, that's the response. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I want you to know that I am living my best life and it's not a cliche. So if you're really ready to embrace living your best life, I hope to see you inside my workshop Monday, February 8th at 7 p.m. Come and let's talk about how you can live a more purposeful life. Let's talk about the six ways that you can overcome uh, your limitations. Let's, let's really talk about the six ways that you can create a better life for you, for your children, and for your children's children. Your future awaits, and I hope to see you in the class on Monday. Take care.